Today I'm going to be going to the Red House. And the Red House is now in the care of the National Trust, but it's William Morris's home, as was. <laughs> and it was designed by Philip Webb. And it's full of arts and crafts, which is great. But actually, what I'm looking forward to seeing today are the Sussex chairs. And there's quite a collection of Sussex chairs at the Red House because, of course, William Morris and co were famous for making Sussex chairs. And having made a, a Sussex chair, I want to see how mine compares to the ones at the Red House. So we'll have a look around. Nice gardens and a nice house to look inside as well. Well, nowadays, the Red House is approached down a suburban street. Of course, when it was built, it was all open countryside and farmland. William Morris, who really was, I suppose, the leader of the arts and crafts movement, all intense, he actually started, well, got the land in 1858 and got building, and the house was then in use from 1860. And it had lots of, sort of arts and crafts style influences in it, and it's almost castle like with its Gothic sort of arches and there's lots of lovely sort of handmade things around the house. It was a bit unusual at the time to do a house of this sort of quality in red brick but it's done in a lovely traditional style and it has all details like here you've got a bit of guttering with a hopper and it, that's done in a castellated style and William Morris had been through France looking at the French chateau and I think that probably inspired Webb and himself with the design of the house. It's set in a very nice little area of ground. The house, when it was built, cost about 400000 to build, which at the time was quite a lot of money. It probably equates to something like a couple of million in today's money. But um, it was expensive, but there is a lot of sort of artistic labour in there. Lots of design sort of went in. I mean, here we have, and you'll see these from the inside in a minute, but little mosaic windows representing the four seasons. This is on the front door. Lovely blacksmithing on those hinges. <laughs> Real sort of attention to detail. And here's a view from the sort of side of the house. The well there was actually quite a feature at the time because London didn't have good water and to be able to come out of London and have nice water from a well was really quite something. That's an experiment with tiles that Morris did that perhaps didn't work quite so well. This is entering the hallway and there's lovely glass um, sort of painting work on the glass. Lots of little detail. One of his many wallpapers. Of course, when Morris was trying to fit out the Red House, he couldn't get the furniture and fittings that he really wanted and had to commission them all. But that made him decide to set up the company, Morris, Faulkner & Co, to actually produce goods. So quite a good edit of drawings. This is the stairway, and I love the little sort of portholes in the side of the stairs that children probably would look through and these nice bishop mitre types newel posts they didn't have a visitor's book people etched their name on the glass on the window glass and there's some quite fun names in there that's the front door from the inside so i mean the whole house it's very sort of bohemian in a way i mean at the time it must have been completely nuts lovely brickwork on this chimney bishop mitre sort of style in the brickwork but look at the bricks they actually taper downward and they would have been filed in the top of the kiln to make them a bit softer so that they could then be filed down a nice bit of cabinet work again all slightly experimental i mean i think with a lot of this morris and his friends his friends used to come here were quite young at the time here we have sussex chairs galore i was in heaven looking at those and actually when i looked at them i realized the one i had made really was pretty close to form the little spindles in the back were a tad thicker and the back leg posts were a tad thicker but otherwise they really did look in terms of dimension the same as the one that I made on this channel. Again another nice bit of woodwork there. Quite a sort of interesting gothic -y type style to all of this. There's quite a lot of stenciling throughout the house and here you can see the ceiling which Morris and his friends did quite laboriously. I think probably they got a bit fed up with it because there, in the little top corner with a torch on it, is a little smiley face. So someone obviously got a bit fed up with doing those particular shapes. Again, a nice big round window here with more painting on the glass. Here we have the studio, and it's a nice light airy room. The wallpaper there is one by Morris called Marigold. And in the room there are some printing blocks and a sample book, just to give an example of some of the many wallpapers that they produced. And some of the patterns had actually quite complicated block designs. 
So here's, here's some blocking which is done to actually produce that particular wallpaper. These murals here are actually quite a new discovery. They were found underneath sort of paintwork recently and the conservators have been trying to actually revive them and get the colour back out. That's a nice bit of cruel work there. Again, in the sort of daisy style of the wallpaper. This is all in the, one of the bedrooms. Another nice brick fireplace. And this particular room is one of the living rooms. There's great attention to detail with each of the rooms and they really were you know, very attractively set out. There was some stunning wallpaper, wall painting in this particular room. These murals were actually painted by Byrne Jones and the colour was absolutely lovely in them. Again, a nice piece of furniture there which did actually have panels on it and they have found some panels in one, one of the museums which I think probably go with this particular bit of furniture. That was one of Morris's attempts at early wallpaper and obviously a predecessor to the ones he sold through Morris, Faulkner and Co. Here's a bit more detail of the Burne Joan paintings. It's wonderful actually to think these have survived over the years. Nice little window seat area. There's a Rossetti chair there and um, very nice tapestry work on those cushions. There weren't great stretching views from the house nowadays, but I dare say when it was built, there weren't the other houses in the area and there weren't the trees. The garden itself was quite nicely set out and, um, well, just an enjoyable place to be. I anyway, hope you enjoyed that one and thanks for watching.